Morning Year 10, I hope you're really well. So today we're going to be moving on, but before we move on, I want you to have a go at this paper one, question one recap. So you need to read lines one to five that are on the screen. You then need to list four things from this part of the text that we learn about, about the narrator. So what four things in this section do we learn about the narrator? OK, so if you can get a green pen or any coloured pen for that matter, um, we're going to mark what you've got. So you could have had any of these answers. So the narrator's name is Susie Salmon. She was murdered. She was 14 when she was murdered. Her date of death, the fact she is white and the fact that she has mousy brown hair. OK, then, so we're going to understand paper one, question two today. So if you can do today's date and if you can do today's title to understand paper one, question two. Paper one, question two, then. So it's all about analysing language. Now, this is something you have been doing all the way in school, so it shouldn't be anything new to you. OK. The question is always, how does the writer use language to describe? And then it lists something. So to describe the weather, to describe the narrator, to describe the setting, anything like that. You get eight marks for this question. So uh, we, myself and the exam board, we advise you to spend 10 minutes on this question. Now, to begin with, you're going to really struggle to answer that in that time. But the more practice you get, the quicker you get to get it done within 10 minutes. This question assesses the writer's use of language. The words, so particular words you might want to pick out, talk about connotations. Language features, so similes, metaphors, personification, um, and sentences. Okay, so thinking about short sentences, long, exaggerated sentences with complex um, sentences in. So, yeah, it assesses your the writer's use of language to achieve effects using relevant subject terminology. Okay. If you can please quickly jot that in your book, just a few um, ideas and so the marks given, the time spent um, and the question stem. How does the writer use language to describe? OK, so our next activity then is looking at the section that I want you to talk about today. And this is here in the blue box. So in a minute, I'm going to read it to you. And whilst I'm reading it and afterwards, I want you to write down the types of words or language features you could pick out in this extra that are good. So what language features could you pick out? I've started you off with adjectives. What else could you pick out from this whilst I read it to you? The whispers led the boy to a clearing deep in the woods where a rotted old tree stump sat in the centre and fallen leaves covered the ground like crunchy brown carpet. The boy stood next to the stump, waited and listened. He couldn't see the whispers, but he knew they were there. Their wispy voices surrounded him, ticking the rims of his ears and filling every darkened shadow of the forest. What I'd like you to do then is go through there and just bullet point for me language features that are in here for me. Thank you. I'll give you about 10, uh, not 10 minutes, uh, about three to five minutes for that activity, please. So then our question today is how does the writer use language to describe the setting? OK, so this is what we're looking at. We're looking at the setting. The whispers led the boy um, to a deep clearing deep in the woods where a rotten old tree stump sat in the centre and fallen leaves covered the ground like crunchy brown carpet. OK, so that's the first bit I've highlighted, crunchy brown carpet. That is a simile, but what does that tell us about the setting? Well, we know it's set in autumn. The idea that it leaves like a crunchy brown carpet, but can we think about the phrase brown? Again, it's not it's not bright, it's not vibrant, it's quite autumnal. We get the idea that it's set in winter, okay? We then move on, and down here, I've said their wispy voices surrounded him ticking the rims of his ears and filling every darkened shadow of the forest. So the forest is described as being darkened. It's described as being like a shadow. OK, so what 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 do we think the forest is like then? If it's described like that, well, it's quite ominous, quite eerie, maybe quite dangerous. 
maybe the idea of a place that's quite evil because in this darkened shadow of the forest um, we've got wispy voices okay the fact that he couldn't see the whispers but he knew they were there because of this evil forest so they were just some ideas i picked out um, about how the writer uses language i'd pick out this simile like crunchy brown carpet i would use dark and shadow of the forest so i'd use a simile and your adjectives and talk about what kind of setting is created now to do that we do it in point, evidence, explain, keyword. Um, and I'll go through that a bit more with you. So our point would be the writer uses, and then what does he use? Simile or adjectives to describe the setting. So the writer uses adjectives to describe the setting. This can be seen through, and then this would be your quotation. Explain what that tells us about the setting, the idea of it being ominous, eerie, dangerous, maybe even evil. And then key word, pick out one of those words. I would pick darkened and I pick out the connotations associated with that word. Now we spoke about connotations before. OK, it's what do you think of when you say that word? When you say darkened, what immediately pops into your head? OK, again, if you're struggling with connotations, have a quick Google um, and get a few ideas so you're confident with that. Now, for this question, we are after two peak paragraphs. OK, within 10 minutes, which again, once you get practice up, um, you get become more confident in doing it. OK, but that is just an example and then we'll move on. So I just wanted to go through with you the mark scheme. This is something I would usually get used to stick in your book. If you would like to copy it out, be my guest, but um, don't worry. So we're sort of aiming, if you want a grade four minimum, you need to be getting four marks. This is your grade four. OK. So you come, you attempt to comment on the language, some appropriate, some use. You've tried, but it's not great. To get into clear for your fives and your sixes, you need to talk about the key word in detail. You need to be talking about connotations. OK, I'm just going to put con because connotations is quite long for me to write up there. You need to be talking about connotations in there to get your five to six marks. Your seven to eight marks, that's something we'll probably look at when you when you come back. Um, but just for your first attempt, I'd like everybody to be writing something that is at least getting them four out of eight or five or six out of eight. OK, once you've had lots of practices, that's when we start to look at this band for how to make that better. How is it going to be detailed? Exactly how are we going to do that? OK, so it's over to you now. Um, we've got the um, an, an, we've got the question here, and this is how it would look in your exam. Okay, so look in detail at this extract from lines six to ten. Here they are. How does the writer use language to describe the setting? Eight marks, and it bullet points them. Okay. So what I'd like you to do is I'd like to give you just do ten minutes. Do not worry if you've not written two peak paragraphs. This is your first attempt. So ten minutes. That is all. Don't give yourself any more your first attempt at answering how does the writer use language to describe the setting. Remember, you are writing in a peak paragraph. OK, point, evidence, explain, keyword. If you need to go back to my previous slide to look at what I spoke about with the extract, please be my guest. But no more, no longer than 10 minutes, please. Once you've done that, then it is up to you what you would like to do now. This is a choice. You can either do your peer assessment, but obviously not with someone else because you're at home. So self-assessment for your work, or if you want me to mark it for you, for your first attempt, please take a picture of it and email it to me. OK, email is better for me than show my homework. So if you can take a picture of it and email it to me of what you've done, I will happily mark that for you year 10. OK. It is ultimately your choice. If you want to self-assess it, that's fine. But if you want me to mark it, I will also mark that for you. So that's about it for today's lesson. Um, we've gone through how to do a question two. We have looked at a question two. I've talked you through it. You've then had to write it yourself and either self-assess it or email it to me for me to mark. 
There are two quiz questions on Show My Homework that I'd like you to do, please, at the end of this lesson. Other than that, I hope you will have a really lovely day and I hope to see you soon.